Live from the studios at Brigham Young University. The award-winning 11 News at Noon starts now. Frauds found. Provo police called for help finding these men and they are now in custody. Native traditions. BYU's tribe of many feathers cooks up a night of culture and crafts. Growing green. Tips on how you can keep your lawn looking good in this year's early warm forecast. I'm Aubrey Stuckey. And I'm Shaylee Sorensen. Welcome to 11 News at Noon. Provo police are thanking social media for helping them fight crime. A Facebook post by the department helped police identify two check fraud suspects. People were quick to respond to the call for help. Yesterday, we showed this video of the men the police were trying to identify for forgery. Detectives booked 21-year-old Andy Anderson into the county jail for the 12th time on charges of forgery. Orem police also arrested 26-year-old Jeremy Dixon for alleged possession of a forgery device. Charges for him are pending. The Davis County School District is facing a lawsuit by one of the alleged victims of former English teacher Brianne Altice. This is video from January court hearing. The then 17-year-old boy's family is suing for emotional damage after a sexual relationship between Altice and the boy. Court documents say the school district knew of Altice's inappropriate actions with the former students, but did not terminate her employment. An Ogden man who pleaded guilty to murder says he is sorry for killing a mother and her son. Jeremy Lee Valdez faced family members of his alleged victims during a sentence hearing and apologized for the crime. A judge sentenced Valdez this morning to life in prison. Prosecutors say Valdez killed Pamela Jeffries and Matthew Roddy in 2009 after an argument. Firing squads could be used in Utah to carry out the death penalty if there is a shortage of execution drugs. The Senate passed a bill on Tuesday approving this action as many states struggle to get lethal injections drugs due to a nationwide shortage. The Senate passed the bill yesterday on an 18 to 10 vote and if the governor signs it, Utah would be the only state so far to bring back this form of capital punishment. Good and bad news for commuters and road trippers. An average of $2.25 per gallon means the state gas prices have risen 22.9 cents from last week. National trends show the country's averages also rapidly increasing. But the good news is experts expect prices to level off soon. Some BYU students got their fill of Native American goodies at the Campus Culture Night. The sound of drums and the smell of flour fill the room as BYU students learn more about Native American culture. From cooking to crafting, members of BYU's Tribe of Many Feathers are busy teaching volunteers about Native traditions. At Culture Share Night, students measure ingredients, pour water, and mix up batches of fry bread dough. Some dance to the music with hoops in hand and still others trace cut and stitch material together to make their own pair of moccasins. Whether or not students have done these activities before, they say that they love learning more about Native American culture. If you have fun and feel safe biking in Utah, you're not alone. In fact, the biking community of America agrees with you. The League of American Bi Bicyclists has Utah in the top 10 of the most bicycle-friendly states in the country. 11 News reporter McCall Mischler hit the streets to see what it's like biking in Utah. Safety, commuting, and air quality are all factors in determining how bike-friendly a state is. And it looks like Utah is doing just fine in all those areas. Bikers, consider yourselves lucky. Utah is the eighth most bike-friendly state in America. I like riding my bike because I always run into friends when I go on bike rides. The top 10 ranking isn't a far jump from its number 14 ranking last year but there were some big improvements in most of the individual categories. Education, funding, law enforcement, programs, and evaluation are all looked at to determine how bike-friendly a state is. According to the League of American Bicyclists, Utah scored highest in law enforcement and bike education. The state did not receive many points when it came to funding, and bikers agree. To be honest, the sidewalks are pretty bad here just because they're really uneven. The bike-friendly list doesn't just show rankings, it also has feedback on biking in each state. The most common suggestion was to start a complete street policy, which promises to plan around bikers when making state transportation changes. People always park 
along all the sides of the roads, so then sometimes you're scared you're going to get hit by a car. Even with the small improvements that the biking environment needs, Utah bikers say they still love the quick way to get around town. Every day starts with a good bike ride. Not only was Utah in the top 10 in the country, but it was also ranked in the top 5 in the western region. Aubrey and Shaley? Wow, well, I'll have to get out and ride my bike more. Yeah, actually, when I first moved to Utah, I didn't even have a car, and I was surprised how easy it was to just have a bike and get around. Awesome. Well, when 11 News at Noon continues. Search underway. Officers are looking for 11 military soldier copter crashes in Florida. And clear lines. A verdict is made in the plagiarism case of Burrell and Robin Thicke's song, Blurred Lines. Stay with us. 11 soldiers are presumed dead after a helicopter crash in Florida. A domestic dispute leaves one dead in Ohio. And music artists face plagiarism. Here's your look at news from across the nation. 11 U.S. military members are presumed dead as the search continues for their drowned Black Hawk helicopter. Dense fog is believed to be the cause of their crash during a training mission in the Florida Panhandle Tuesday night. Officials say rescuers found debris from the aircraft and a number of human remains around the Okaloosa Island near Eglin Air Force Base. A shooting in Ohio leaves one man dead and a police officer recovering in the hospital. Police say they were responding to a domestic violence call when a suspect shot the officer. The police chief says at least one round struck the officer's bulletproof vest, which likely saved his life. Officers returned fire and killed the suspect. It looks like Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams were hoping plagiarism would have more of a blurred line. Marvin Gaye's family argued that the hit song Blurred Lines copyrighted Gaye's 1977 Got to Give It Up. A Los Angeles jury ordered the two artists to pay $7,300,000 to the family of Marvin Gaye for copyright infringement. The family is now moving to stop the sale of the song Blurred Lines. And that's your look at news from across the nation. Shaley. Getting that luscious springtime lawn you've always wanted may be a little bit harder this year. 11 News reporter Lauren Tippett tells us how to keep your lawn green after the, the dry winter months. We've all noticed the unusually warm weather, and now might just be a good time to think about watering your lawn. But there might be ways to conserve water while still keeping your lawn green. Blooming flowers and green grass are sure signs that spring is on its way. And with the weather being unseasonably warm, it seems to be just within reach. Employees at Cook's Farm and Greenhouse say it's almost time to start watering your lawn. Probably uh, most people water secondary, so you know, secondaries usually don't come on until about April. Since we have been lacking in moisture this season, there are some ways to keep your lawn green that will help conserve water. The best thing to do is a winterizer in the fall. That will help it be green early without having to water. Pre-emergent is a fertilizer that can be put on your lawn to prevent weeds and crabgrass from cropping up. Pre-emergent is something you put on right now. A lot of people call it crabgrass preventer. It's so warm now that weeds are germinating that you want to put it on as early as you can. With planting season just around the corner, there are lots of options to get your grass looking its best. There are a few things experts say you can put on your lawn now. It's a crabgrass preventer and fertilizer. Um, that's for the early spring. Employees at Cook say that in order for pre-emergent to work, it needs about half an inch of water. So with light showers possibly coming up, now would be a good time to get that on your lawn. Shaylee? Yeah, I stepped outside expecting another sunny day, but it looks like it's going to rain and that might help our lawn. What yeah. do you think, Emily? You know, you may not have to worry about the rain today, but it will be a little cooler. I'll have all of your weather details when we come back. Hi and welcome back. It's a cloudy Tuesday or Wednesday morning here and you know we may not have the rain today but we are expecting the clouds to cover the sun up for the whole day. Right now it is 44 degrees outside. We have 49 percent humidity. Winds at nine miles an hour. It's kind of chilly outside. We are expecting it to warm up as the day progresses but it, the sun will not be out today. Um, we can see across the nation these storms from the south are still moving up into the northeast and over here in the west we're seeing some storms move across the nation including Utah. It's going to bring us some rain later tonight but as for right now we're in the clear. Our highs today are going to be pretty
pretty nice. We're going to be in the 50s and 60s across northern Utah. St. George will be 75. It's going to be cloudy across the state, so maybe going on a vacation today wouldn't be a good idea. Um, and we are going to see those clouds roll through to tonight. It's going to be just cloudy in St. George, but up north we are going to see some rainstorms starting to form around the early hours this morning. Um, it's going to be in the 40s tonight. It's going to be about 43, so we won't be seeing any snow. We will see some rain around 3 a.m., especially in the Provo area. The sun will set around 7.30. So it is looking like it's going to be a chilly night. Maybe bring your umbrella for the commute tomorrow morning. Um, as for our southern five-day forecast, it's going to be beautiful after the next couple of days. Right now it's 75. It's going to be 73 tomorrow. The sun will come back out on Friday and we'll work our way up to 79 on Sunday. It's going to be gorgeous, gorgeous down in St. George. If you're planning on going down there, this weekend is the time to do it. As for northern Utah, it's going to be 65 today, 59 tomorrow with rainstorms pretty much throughout the day. That'll clear up really quickly. On Friday will be 64. And then by Sunday, we're going to be 69. We're seeing this warm weather coming. And I don't know about you guys, I am thrilled for this warm weather. Like, we didn't have a really harsh winter, but I'm all about the warm weather. Yeah, it's definitely spring, but it's kind of gloomy outside. I'm kind of like affected by that. I'm feeling gloomy myself. Well, I feel like after last night's game, there's a lot of people feeling gloomy at BYU. Can you tell us about that, Brandon? Yeah, some Cougar fans might have reason to be a little bit gloomy, but there's also some good news too. So when 11 sports comes back, Vegas results. It's been a wild ride for Cougar hoops. See why there's still reason to rejoice after last night. And bowling over batters. Spring is in the air and so is softball. See how one BYU pitcher is fanning batters on her way to record books. Sports coming up next. <laughs> BYU basketball saw two squads roll into championship Tuesday and it was a mixed result. Our team in Vegas chronicled the final day of highs and lows. Reggie, two huge games. Give me the Cougar breakdown. Brandon, both teams played tough, but only one came out on top. 11 Sports reporter Rachel Libby is here. Let's start with the champs. They're going back to the NCAA tourney. How did they do it? Reggie, all I have to say is that we started from the bottom, and now we're here. No one saw it coming. The Cougars climbed their way from the fifth seed to the top of the WCC. This time last year, the Cougars were headed home empty-handed after losing in the championship game to Gonzaga. But this year is a completely different story. I have a lot of belief in these girls, and they have a lot of heart. And it showed this weekend in Vegas, um, and it's amazing uh, to be going to the NCAA tournament again, and we're ready to make some noise again. Whatever seed you are, it doesn't matter. It just depends on how you come ready to play at the end of the year, and we proved that. The battle began with a quick three-pointer from San Francisco to get things rolling, but that was one of the last times they would hold the lead. Nine minutes into the game, they jumped ahead once more, 18-17. But just minutes later, Lexi Eaton took that lead right out of their hands with a sweet layup. From there, the Cougars never looked back. Despite the Dons' best effort to keep up with the quick pace BYU set for the entire matchup, they were always running from behind. Taj Winston led her team with an impressive 24 points. If her teammates had played as well as her, we'd be telling a different story. But on the Cougar side of the court, the victory was once again a team effort. Mackenzie Morrison had a killer presence from behind the arc, draining five out of eight baskets, and they ended up with 19 points, a tray and in the paint. She stepped it up throughout the tournament and made it obvious she knows how to lead this team to a title win. With more experience, you learn how to play well in championship games, and I like to be that kind of a player that comes through in, in big games. But we can't forget the big machine down low that is Morgan Bailey. The girl had 20 points and eight total rebounds. If there's one player that gained more confidence as the tournament went on, it would be her. As the clock winded down, the Cougars never let up. They have every reason to celebrate tonight before preparing for the NCAA tournament. What makes it most impressive for the women's team is that they are the lowest seed to ever win the tournament. That's pretty awesome. I can't wait till Monday to see what seed they get in the NCAA tourney. Thanks, Rachel. While the women were able to hoist the trophy, 
and punched their ticket to the NCAA tourney. The men ran into a freight train. 11 Hoop sports analyst Mitchell Marshall is here. Mitch, break it down for us. What went wrong for the Cougars last night? A lot went wrong, and it went wrong from the start of the game, especially with foul trouble. We're talking the best player, the best scorer, Tyler Haas, and the big man, Kafusi getting in trouble early. And when Kafusi went down, you see Gonzaga come out on top because they have so much height and length that we couldn't defend without Kafusi. It threw off the rotation of the entire team, and Gonzaga took advantage of every opportunity. Let's take a look. Feed the beast. Gonzaga fed Karnowski down low like you feed a fat kid cake. And he devoured BYU inside, getting every big man in foul trouble, putting up 12 points. He was one of six Bulldogs in double figures. To no one's surprise, the lone bright spot for BYU was Kyle Collinsworth. He had eight boards, five assists, and a game-high 28 points. He wanted it. He was taking shots you never see him take and driving it like the scoring relied upon him, which it did, and that's a bad formula for the Cougars. They made it close a few times, but the runs were fleeting. Casey was without his sunshine band, and the Zags made BYU pay for every mistake. Tourney MVP Kyle Wilcher switched 18, and the Bulldogs shot 66% from three, pulling away late. They would take the WCC crown with a 91-75 final. So Mitch, based on what you've seen this week, are the Cougars an NCAA tourney team? They're a tournament team, period. They have a better record, a better resume than they had last year when they went into the tournament as a 10 seed. They went into the house of a 2-3 seed Gonzaga team and they won. They're playing some of the best basketball that they've played all year right now and they have two of the best players in the nation. There's no way the committee can keep them out at this point. And so if they do make the tournament, who do you think their star player will be? Who impressed you the most this week here in Vegas? You know, in Vegas, I wanted to see Tyler Haas come up big, and he played very well, but somehow we saw Kyle Collinsworth get even better. Another triple-double, a career high against a great Gonzaga team. He put BYU on his back. BYU doesn't even keep that game close if he's not on the court. So if BYU goes into that tournament, any high seed should be afraid of them because he can take them to the next level and he can cause a pretty big upset. No limit on his potential. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch. We'll find out come selection Sunday, this Sunday. Thanks, Mitch. So that's it for us down here in Vegas. It was a great week full of mostly ups, a couple downs, but the Cougars represented well. We'll find out where they go on Sunday and Monday in the NCAA tourney. At the Orleans Arena, Reggie Lewis, 11 Sports. Reggie Lewis in the news, cool as the rule. Great work all week, guys. See you soon. The women's basketball team spent all week in Vegas and made every second count. 11 Sports reporter Clara Goodwin was at the Orleans Arena and saw the journey of the team all the way to the trophy. The women went from zero to hero throughout the tournament. They came into the first matchup struggling, but then proved they're a force to be reckoned with. Very few teams would have lost four of the last five. Very few have come back and done this. It just shows what kind of young ladies these guys are. St. Mary's swept BYU during the season, but the women didn't let that phase them. Game one down, the women kept their streak going by knocking out number one Gonzaga. Holy cow. Three weeks ago, didn't know we'd be here. But and just yesterday, we witnessed an underdog championship of fifth-ranked BYU versus number six San Francisco. The women came out to prove that nothing is impossible. Now the BYU women's basketball team just won the championship. They're ranked five seed. That's the lowest seed to ever win the championship. And I'm here with Morgan Bailey. Morgan, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling ecstatic. Um, always great to bring back the trophy, and it's even greater when you're the fifth seed and um, take down some really good teams. The women are now going dancing in an even bigger tournament later this month. I'm really proud of what this women's team has accomplished. NCAA! The team will take their hats, their net, and their well-deserved trophy back home to Provo. At the Orleans Arena, Clara Goodwin, 11 Sports. Morgan Bailey and Mackenzie Morrison were also voted to the WCC All-Tournament team. And Lexi Eaton was awarded Most Outstanding Player of the Tournament. Records are meant to be broken, and a BYU softball pitcher has her eyes set on one as she leads the team from the mound this season. 11 Sports reporter Skyler Street got behind the catcher to get the count on this rising star. Enter McKenna Bull. This BYU sophomore has been crushing it this season with a 1.9 ERA. She punches out batters and sends them back to the dugout with some dangerous stuff from the mound. I have a rise ball, a drop, a change, a curve, and a screw. The softball team has 13 wins on the season, and all 13 of those wins have come with McKenna Bull on the mound. 
Not only has she pitched in all of the wins, but also pitched in every game. Bowles the main starter, but also comes in as a closer to seal the deal. Pitching coach Pete Meredith is confident that she can handle any trouble on the diamond. Got to be strong-willed and, and committed to being into those uh, kind of situations. And, the, and, and McKenna's the kind of kid that wants to be there. Bull broke the record for strikeouts as a freshman last year and right now has 298 with more than three quarters of the season to go. The BYU all-time record holder has 803 strikeouts and she may need to start looking over her shoulder for this sophomore who's racking up the Ks. I wanted to keep breaking the strikeout records and all the records and so that's my goal is to be the all-time leader. Bull will continue to pitch her way into the record books this season as she leads the Cougars. On BYU campus, Skyler Street, 11 Sports. The Cougars have won six straight behind the arm of Bull, and they play in San Diego tomorrow in a five-game tournament to tighten things up before they have their home opener on March 20th against Oklahoma State. Wow, well not gloomy for that women's basketball team. I am so impressed. I know, yeah. right? No one was expecting them to do that, especially over the Met. Yeah, like Rachel said in her package, nobody with that seed has ever won a tournament like that before. So it was a great run. Wow. Well, still to come on 11 News at noon, Swine Student. There's a new classmate in this school for man's best friend. We'll be right back. Only dogs show up in a canine class, but Amy the pig is upsetting the norm. Amy's owner, Lori Stock, says she wanted a new animal to train and Amy was perfect for the job. Lori says her pig is extremely active indoors and learns faster than past pets. Pigs don't naturally act like dogs, but food incentives tend to help motivate Amy. So yesterday we had a calf in a hot tub <laughs> and today we have a pig in a class. That's, That's the news. I love it. What's up with these farm animals? I love animals farm animals off the farm. Oh man, makes for some exciting news. Well, that's your 11 news for our 11 news at noon for Wednesday, March 11th. For more information on our stories or to, to share them with your friends, check out our website at 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us.